morning, everybody. My name is Will, and I serve as the youth pastor here at COC. I hope you had an incredible Christmas. We are so excited that you're watching with us online this morning. If you're new around here, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. We would love to connect with you and learn how we can best serve you. You can text COC Next to 97000 and follow the prompt, or you can visit our website at cocbham.com and fill out an online connect card. Both of these ways are safe and secure. For more information about our church, visit cocbham.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Hey, it's going to be a great service today. Let's get ready for worship. Welcome to church. We're so glad you decided to join us. We pray and hope you had a great Christmas day with your family. But now it's time to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So come on, lift your hands wherever you are and let us praise and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
Good morning, church family. Ashley here, and this is CLC News. We hope you all had an incredible Christmas and are comfy and enjoying church from home this morning. We can't wait to be together again next week as we kick off a new year. We know that God has more, and we're excited to see what He does in 2022. 21 days of prayer and fasting begins on January the 2nd through the 22nd. During these 21 days, we encourage you to attend our prayer service every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. These prayer services are for anyone who wants to grow closer to God and cultivate a lifestyle of prayer. On Saturday, January 22nd, we will be having 24 hours of prayer. To sign up for our prayer slot, visit our website at clcbham.com. We are expecting God to do amazing things. You can also go to our website for more information on Bible reading plans and fasting resources. Well, that's it for me today. Stay up to date with everything that's happening at CLC by following us online at clcbham.com and on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Good morning, everyone. We are so excited that you have joined us this morning, the Sunday right after Christmas. I am joined yep. with none other than Pastor Jeremy. What's up, everybody? And Pastor Trey. What's up, man? Hope What's you up? guys are doing well. Hope you had a good yes. Christmas. Yes. Did you have a good Christmas? I ate a ton, so huh? much food. Well, it was obvious. great. Yeah. The presents were good, but the food was fantastic. Oh, it's always absolutely great. Yeah. It was it good was, times. It was what fantastic. did you eat, man? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I'm a big ham person, uh -huh. so ate a ton of ham, all the sides. All How the sides. How ironic is it that you being a ham ate a lot of ham? Right. I am. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just saying. Ham I, all day long. And then just give me not... I don't have one particular side. Just give me all of them. That's right. I, all I, of I, it's them. hard to choose. Just all. Seconds, thirds, fourths. Yeah. Fifths. Six, yeah. Yeah. Late night snack. Just it's the season of giving. There you go. Yeah. And so, yeah, why not? Give yourself some more food. Hey, right there in the comments, let us know what your favorite part of Christmas was this year. Favorite present? Presents, yeah. Food, food. candy, desserts. Uh. <laughs> Peanut butter fudge. Oh, for you, never, Pastor never. Trey, right? I will great, graciously give that to you. Oh, well, and I will graciously receive it. <laughs> So we're just glad that you are here, wherever you're watching from. That's right. You know, because of technology, guys, we are able to be in hundreds of yep, homes awesome. all across the Birmingham area, mm -hmm. and uh, we're just excited. Whatever platform you're watching with us, right. Facebook, YouTube, our website, we're just glad that you are along for the journey That's today, right. and uh, in just a few minutes, we're going to dive into God's Word. But one thing that we like to do the very end of the year is we like to celebrate wins. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's been a great year. God, oh, man, yes. God has done Unbelievable. so much stuff in mm -hmm. the life of our church this year in 2021. Right. And uh, we want to take just a second, and we want to celebrate some things, some things that all of you have been a huge part of and uh, want to celebrate some of these wins. And I think one of the first ones that we should celebrate, Pastor Jeremy, is huge. Yes. This one takes the crown is this year, drum roll, <laughs> is we have had 65 salvations. Amen. Amen. Come That's on. Awesome. I need God you for to that. put yes. your hands together online. 65 yes. Yes. salvations. That's, great. That's incredible, man. God is, God is moving in a great way, and what a great time to celebrate that at the end of the year. Yeah. And you guys played a part in that. That's so right. it's such an honor it's incredible. to celebrate what God is doing and has done this Lives year. Lives yep. being changed. That's right. Amen. 65 Amen. people from awesome. death to life. That's right. Absolutely incredible. You know, one of the things that um, we love doing here uh, at CLC is outreach. Right. Pastor Trey, tell us about some of those wins throughout the year. Yes, where do I start? You guys have been incredible this year. Um, from Love Lady Center, we've partnered with the Love Lady Center, and we have been able to provide 400 meals for the women and the children and the staff at the Love Lady Center. We've donated over 100 backpacks yep. to those in our community. Um, we've also had three serve days in, yep. in um, March after the tornadoes. You guys jumped yeah. in. Right. Um, Blood, sweat, and tears got involved, engaged in July, and then that last was also, month. That was also a lot of blood, sweat, sweat and, and tears. tears. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. A lot of sweat there. There you go. And in this last month, past month yeah. in November, 
being able to impact lives across this, this city. A um, hundred families received dinner for Christmas. That's right. And so we're grateful for that. Um, and close to about 10,000 people, you mentioned PJ. That's right. Directly impacted through the ministries so here. And then homeless l- outreach. Let's just pause there for a yes. moment. You just said something. I don't want to breeze past that. Yes. Close to 10,000 people. Wow. Locally here in Birmingham was directly impacted by the love, the generosity, and the ministries of Christian Life Church. And every person that's a part of our church played a part in that. 10,000 people just here in Birmingham directly Amen. impacted. Doesn't incredible. include what we do globally with missions. Right. Yes, yeah, exactly. And then one of the things that uh, we love to do, our church does so well, is Angel Tree. Yes. And we were able to sponsor 75, 75 kids. kids. Man, right. what, a, what a blessing to do that. And then on Saturdays, uh, once a month, our homeless outreach, yeah. 100 meals during that time. You mentioned awesome. Angel Tree. Man, God has just been moving this year. And how about this year yeah. in Angel Tree, the tags were gone two weeks before they were two supposed weeks before. to be. That's right. Record so, setting. Huh? Awesome. I mean, yes. Incredible. It's just, our church is so incredibly generous. Uh, Pastor Jeremy, uh, tell them about missions giving this so, year. So, yeah. So, we support uh, 54 missionaries around the world, and uh, we this year have given close to $200,000 away, and that's gone in two different ways. That's gone to re- directly to missionaries so that we have boots on the ground, and then it's also gone to resource those missionaries so they have resources in their hands to do what God's called them to do. That's uh, Bibles, that's curriculum, that's vehicles. I think this year we gave the largest offering to BGMC that we've ever given, which is $24,000. And that was to provide uh, resources all across the globe for people that are ministering to kids, to teenagers, to adults. It's just incredible. So, I mean, you're talking about thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people that have been impacted locally and internationally through the ministries of Christian Life Church. And I just want everybody to know uh, I am totally on board for Pastor Jeremy having to kiss more pigs <laughs> so that we can raise more money for BGMC. It's whatever you got to do for the gospel. That's right. <laughs> that, you know, you, that's the call. You just got to kiss gotta a pig. Do it. I didn't have to be a part of that. He did. So I just saved more than me. Hope you enjoyed it this yeah. year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 54 missionaries on the ground that we're supporting. I mean, that's just absolutely incredible. incredible. And, uh, and then beyond giving, Pastor Jeremy, tell us about that. So yeah, so thus far we uh, launched Beyond Initiative again in November of this year. And so we've had almost $300,000 pledged and, and $150,000 of that has already been given. Wow. And so there are projects underway in January. Uh, we're expecting new carpet in the sanctuary. Everybody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we're going to have some of our uh, doors opened up and expanded so we can accommodate better people flow, new AVL system, and other things are on the docket for 2022. So we're so excited that we are advancing the kingdom of God here and making room so that people can come to know Jesus, find community, and, yeah. and grow their family in the wisdom of the way of the Lord. And in addition to all of that, we pay down down our mortgage about two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars this past year. So two hundred and twenty-five thousand right. dollars. That's right. it's incredible. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's absolutely. Incredible. Been a great year. And you know, one thing I, I don't want to let this moment go by without celebrating the incredible absolutely. dream team. Come on, absolutely. Of Christian yes. Life Church, whatever capacity you serve in, right. star on Sundays, on Wednesdays, on outreach, and the weekend, right. wherever it may be, we want you to know. You have made That's right. a huge difference in the lives of people here in Birmingham, nationally, internationally. Awesome. And so it just, they're, they're the heroes of CLC. It's great to be a part of this church. We love you guys. Hey, if you got your Bibles, uh, I want you to find those and turn to Matthew chapter 14. We're going to take just a minute. We're going to look at a very familiar passage of Scripture. Love it. And really talk about how do we have faith for the new year? Yeah. Faith for the new year. You know, 2021 brought a lot at us and um, a lot of goods, a lot of bads, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. But I think this morning we really want to focus in and just talk about how do we prepare Mm -hmm. to have the faith God wants us to have Mm -hmm. for the new year. That's right. And we're really going to look at Matthew chapter 14. So if you got your Bibles, I got mine right here. Uh, We're going to start in verse 22 this morning. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. And here's what it says. It says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. Verse 23, and after sending them home, he went up into the hills himself to pray. Night fell 
and he was there alone. Now, verse 24, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting the heavy waves. Verse 25, and about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. Hmm. Verse 26, when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. I, I would be terrified too. <laughs> In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost, verse 27. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said, take courage, I am here. And then verse 28, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. In verse 29, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat, walked on the water towards Jesus, verse 30. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Verse 31, Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? And then verse 32 and 33, when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him. You truly are the son of God. Oh, wow. What a, what a powerful yes, passage incredible. this morning that I think can really kind of give us some context and allow us to be able to talk about how do we have this faith mm. for this new year. Right. And, uh, and, and Peter shows us so well. And really this morning, what we're going to do, if you got your Bibles, just go verse by verse with us through this story. Um, and, and I love in verse 24 right here, uh, Jesus is, is there. And here's what it says in verse 24. It says, meanwhile, the disciples were in, in trouble. trouble. That's probably an understatement right yeah, there, yeah. right? A storm. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little Just bit. Just a little trouble. Right. Far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting the heavy waves. And, and, and I think this kind of reminds me, guys, is uh, in 2021, 2022, That's right. right, we've had some winds, we've had some waves, and to be like really positive Polly here, there's going to be some. There's going to be some waves in this yeah. next year. Absolutely, amen. Right? Yeah. Jesus yeah. promised we're going to have trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, John 16. Jesus said, "Listen, in this world you will have trouble, but He also gives us another promise. Take heart, I've overcome the world. Yeah. So yeah. that should give us confidence for the for the trials that we're facing. Yeah. I, I love how this story is recorded in Mark chapter six. If mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to go there, I'm just going to uh, kind of tell you. It, it, gives us a little bit of a different perspective on this story. It says in Mark chapter six that Jesus is on the shore watching them. Mm. That he sees them the whole, the whole time and he sees them straining at the oars. Yeah. And, and then it almost implies that Jesus just kind of waits and watches them strain. Right. And then at dawn, mm -hmm. he goes to them. Mm. So I had a couple of thoughts about that as, as we were preparing for today. I had, here's my first thought, is that number one, we should take confidence that in our trouble, in our tribulation, in our trial, God always sees us. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. He saw them straining at the oars. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like the, the, they were all, hey, we're going through something and God doesn't know. God's aware. Right. God is acutely aware. As a matter of fact, I think God was watching them so that nothing bad would happen to them, number one, mm -hmm. and number two, to see how they would respond to the trial. Mm -hmm. There's going to be trials in 2022 that are going to come your way. Yeah. You need to know that God sees it and God's aware of it, and he's watching you intently to see how you respond to the storm, how you respond to the trial. And what he wants you to do is to not fret, but have faith. That's good. And far yeah. too often we fret instead of demonstrating and activating our faith mm -hmm. in the midst of the storm. Yeah. And so I think that's a key principle that we need to have in our hearts as we move into 22. There's going to be storms, but I refuse to fret. Instead, I choose to embrace yeah. Yeah. faith that's and right. activate it. Yeah. That's right. And we're but, going to talk yeah. about faith here in just a minute. Yeah, I think often, too, storms may cause us to think that we're alone. That's right. Yeah. But knowing that he's with us in the storm. That's right. That's never leave us nor forsake us. That's, that's assuring. That's, that's comforting to know that the God of the universe is with us right in our storm, in our pain, yeah. 
in the winds and the waves right. and disturbances, as you mentioned, Pastor and it, Noah. And it's something that we've, we've got to know going into the new year. Yeah. Because those moments are coming. Oh, well, I mean, just think about the confidence that begins to descend upon our heart and our mind when I know God sees and I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I know that he sees what I'm going through yeah. and he's never left me, that causes faith to rise up in me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's when I don't think anybody sees and I think that I'm alone, as you mm-hmm. said, Pastor Trey, that doubt and fear Mm -hmm. begin to overwhelm my heart. And then I begin to succumb to the winds and the waves and I begin to strain Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the storm rather than trust in it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And then verse 25, it tells us this, that Jesus came towards them as he's walking on the water. And can we just just pause here for a moment? You know, there's, there's a lot of moments in the Bible that I would just, oh, I'd love to be there. Yeah, right, yeah. You know, I think everybody's got those moments. Yeah. This is one of those moments, That's right. y'all. Where, Front and center, huh? I mean, I, I just, I'd love to be right there as Jesus is walking on the water. And there's so much that's talked about in this story. It talks about Peter and, and the winds and the waves, and we're gonna talk about all of that. Um, but let's not forget that the first miracle that happens is Jesus walking on water. It wasn't Peter walking. No, it was Jesus. It was Jesus walking on water. But we also have to catch that this, they missed it because of the winds and the waves, mm-hmm. right? They missed this miracle that's happening of Jesus is walking towards them on water, mm-hmm. but they missed it. Yeah, yeah. And as I was just kind of praying through this, just reading it this week, In this new year, I don't want all of the circumstances, situations, highs and lows to make me miss God moments. Mm. Come on. You talked about it a few weeks ago. Right. About about sensing God moments. And we Mm. need those God moments. Those God moments both confirm our direction and set our direction. Right. And when we're going into a new season, I need a transcendent moment. I need yeah. a God moment. I need a divine encounter that is confirming yeah. I'm headed in the right direction because I'm going to a place I've never been before. Mm-hmm. I need a little extra confirmation. God Absolutely. knows that. Yeah. Yeah. And so he sends us those moments. The enemy wants to steal them from us. Yeah. Mm-hmm by keeping us distracted by other things. Right. And I'm praying in 2022, we're not distracted by the storms and we see the God moment. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I wonder how just the emotional state of the disciples would have, it probably would have been different if they could have seen Jesus walking towards them in the midst of all the wind oh, absolutely. and the waves. Oh, it changed everything. It, it would have been yeah. a game changer. And so I just encourage you, in this new year, there, stuff's gonna happen. That's right. Make sure to, to sense the God moments in the midst of all of that. Well, mm-hmm. and you said this a few weeks ago, Noah, as well. It's a great statement um, that what you focus on, you magnify, and what you magnify, you focus on. And when we're going through storms of life, our focus is imperative. Absolutely. Because it will either magnify God yeah. or it will magnify the storm. That's right. So you better be careful about what you focus on or you could very miss the thing that God is wanting to do in you and through you. That's true. And it's so easy to see the storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to see that. So Jesus comes to him. He's walking on the water. And then in verse 27, and y'all, we could could just camp out right here, like just all day, (laughs) right? Yes. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Three phrases here that I I think are, it's just a game changer. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. And we'd yeah. like to thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> because that's yeah. about all you need. Yeah, happy, New <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year. That, that yeah. is a verse right there for somebody yeah. for 2022. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Mm-hmm. Well, I have courage because he's here. And fear has no room. Right. Where he is. That's it. Mm-hmm. And so both fear is dispelled and courage grown when we know that he's with us. Yeah. Right. He's, yeah. His presence changes everything. Exactly. If we don't have his presence, we don't have anything. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I think one of the things, too, and we've touched on this a little bit, but as Jesus is saying, don't be afraid, take courage, I am here, we have to put that in the context of both where we've been and where, we've, where we're going. And We've got to be reminded that mm-hmm. everything we're going to face in this next year, God already knows about it. Yes. That's right. That's like, right. like I think back to 
uh, the, the beginning of 2020, right? Mm. And we're all making plans and goals and just, you know, it, we were all taken back. Right. Mm-hmm. God was never taken back. No, he's never surprised. Right. And, and I think we have to be reminded of that, that everything we're going to face, mm-hmm. everything we're going to see, God's already spoken over us. Right. Don't be afraid. Take right. courage. I'm with you. I'm there. Yep. Like he's already yes. in yeah. all the decisions for 2022 mm-hmm. and all right. of the stuff and the pain and whatever, whatever we may face. Whatever we walk into, we have to know that he is already there. And really when we're walking into things, we're really walking into him. Right. Because mm-hmm. he's already prepared the place for us. He's gone ahead of us. And so we should take courage yeah. and dispel fear. That's it. Because he's there. And trust that he's equipped us mm-hmm. for this next year. Right. Right. So don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. And then verse mm-hmm. 28, and this is where we're, we're going to camp out here uh, for just a minute because I think the whole story is so good, but I think this one is really mm-hmm. good. So if you've got your Bible, let's read verse 28 through 30. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, Hmm. tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Verse 29, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on water towards Jesus. Hmm. Man, like I just, what a moment. Verse 30, but when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sing, Lord, save me. He shouted. Yeah. Guys, I think so much of this story is, is about faith. Mm-hmm. And it is. I mean, faith is such a huge part of this. But I think the other side of the equation to this story is there is, is the obedience factor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? It took, for Peter to do this, it took both faith for him to get out of the boat, mm-hmm. but it also took obedience for Peter when he asked, Lord, is this, is this really you? Yeah. And then he gets out of the boat. There's, there's obedience there. And I think in 2022, I think we need both. Absolutely. To do what God's called us to do. Yeah. I think storms can, as Peter asks, Lord, if it's really you, storms can cause life to be blurry and right. confusing and, and, and vague and not knowing where to go and where to turn. I remember a couple of months ago when it, on a Wednesday night we were leaving here and it was just it was a huge downpour. We couldn't see anything going home. It was a night. crazy night, right? And I thought about that as you were reading this, Pastor Noah, about how storms can really cause us to, God, is it, are you really there? I can't see in front of me. The storm is so big. Where, where are you? But to hear God's voice That's to good. say, yes, come. In the midst of yep. confusion and it's blurry, I can't see to come. That's, that's life-changing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To hear his voice, even though you can't really see. Yeah, and it it takes both in the midst of all of that. It takes faith to step out of the boat, and it takes obedience that takes that one step further to say, okay, Jesus, you've called me to come. Now i gotta, now I got to obey, and I've I've got to do it. Yeah. So the question begs to be asked is, what is faith if you don't have obedience? Mm. Because obedience, the Bible tells us, is the practical demonstration of our faith. Abraham heard God say, to your point, Pastor Trey, go to a land that I will show you. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that Abraham packed up everything that he had and he went. went. Yeah. Noah, when God said build an ark, mm-hmm. he built an ark. Yeah. And so obedience is the practical demonstration of our faith. If we, if we don't have obedience on the backside of our faith, we really don't have faith. We just have a mental belief system that we aspire to. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't really bring any kind of transformation to our life. And so it, 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 it took Peter stepping out of the boat to demonstrate his faith. Yeah. And it wasn't until he demonstrated his faith that he began to walk on water. Up until then, it was theoretical. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, the moment he demonstrated it, it became practical. And so for a lot of us moving into 2022, to, to walk in the new thing that God is calling us to, I think it's going to require a practical demonstration of our faith. And what that means is it's going to require you to do what God's told you to do, to take a step, to walk in obedience, and trust that something that should not be able to hold you will be able to hold you. Yeah, that's good. Because it's faith. Yeah. In action. That's it. 
Amen. And this moment is, it's so dynamic, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, like, wherever you're at, I, I want you, I want you just to, to imagine and picture this moment. Jesus has told Peter to come. To your point, Pastor Jeremy, now he has to put his faith into action. That's right. Mm-hmm. He takes a step over the boat, take, lets his hand go, and now he's doing something <laughs> no other person in the history of mankind, except for Jesus, has done. Has ever done. Now, I tried to do this a lot as a kid never worked, in the pool, huh? and it never worked. <laughs> never worked. Never did, right? But, but he's doing this. He takes the biggest mm-hmm. step of faith that he's ever taken. And, and I think there's a couple lessons, and if you want to write these down, you can real quick, that we can learn from Peter that we're just going to give you real quick. And mm-hmm. I think the first one uh, from Peter in this moment is that comfort and calling don't go together. Yeah. Right? I, I think if we're going to do anything great for God, like if we're going to do significant things for God in 2020, some of it, you're going to have to do scared. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right? Like it's, it's going to require faith. It's going to require obedience. And it's going to require, God, I just trust you. Yeah. Well, it, it requires getting out of your comfort zone. I heard... Uh, one missionary say it this way, and I love it, that you can have God or you can have comfort, but you can't have both. It's incredible. Because God's always one step outside of your comfort zone. Why? Because he's trying to stretch our faith. He's trying to, to grow um, uh, his character and his nature and his heart and our understanding of who he is in and through our lives. And if we stay where we are, then we just stay where we are and we never grow in any of those kinds of things. So God's always stretching us. So in 2022, no, you can have God or you can have comfort, but you can't have both. Right. God's always one step outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. So take a step. That's really good. That's really good. Uh, the other thing that we learned from Peter is it takes trust to walk on water. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? It takes faith. It takes obedience. But at the end of the day, for Peter to take his hand off of that boat and to step on water, hmm. he had to trust that Jesus Yeah was going to be there, Mm -hmm. that Jesus would, if he fell, Jesus would be right there Mm -hmm. in that moment. Yeah. And he was. That's right. It's just, it's incredible to me that this moment, it's a combination of faith and obedience and trust. And then one of the last things that we learned from Peter in this moment is that you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. The author and the perfecter of my faith. It's amazing how he didn't move until God told him to, to come. He said, is it, is it really you? Yeah. If it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. And Jesus says, yes, come. So Peter went. It's amazing. That trust, that obedience. Yep. To step so out. As, as long as Peter's eyes were on Jesus, he was good. But as soon as his eyes started Focusing on right. everything else. And, and you mentioned it. There's going to be, there's been a lot of things to focus on in 2021. That's right. There's going to be other things in 2022 to focus on. Mm-hmm. But I just want to encourage us today, in this next year, let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you said, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Mm-hmm. You know, all throughout the New Testament, in particular the Apostle Paul, talks about us setting or fixing mm-hmm. our eyes. That, that we have to choose the destination of our sight. Like, I, I can't just allow things that come at me to grab my attention. I've got to determine what I'm setting my attention upon. Sure. And far too often, we live, I think, our lives a little bit, um, what's the word? We, we, we live a little bit too reactionary based on things that are coming at us. And I react to this situation, I react to this person or to that circumstance or to this problem. And, and so whatever comes at me, I'm kind of mastered by what's most urgent. Yeah, but, but instead, we need to determine the destination of our minds, the destination of our, that I'm gonna think upon those things which are true. And I'm gonna set my eyes on Jesus, the author. I, I am not just going to allow life to dictate to me Mm -hmm. what I focus on, but I'm going to determine it myself so that I can see to fruition what God's wanting to do in my life. That's good. Yeah, and and I think you have to because, especially for Peter in this moment, I mean, imagine everything he's he's facing and and everything that he's looking at. And whether Peter sank 
or whether he walked mm-hmm. on water was all determined on what, what he focused on. What he mm-hmm. focused on. You know, what he chose to really put his eyes on. It, I was just going to say, I heard a great story one time uh, by General Patton. He was being interviewed after World War II, and he uh, got up after he was introduced and had this incredible introduction about this courageous and leader, so on and so forth. I mean, full, full of compliments. And uh, he was asked a question, uh, how did you respond in facing all the different things that you faced courageously? And he made the statement, I learned not to take counsel from my fears. Mm-hmm. He said, we can have a choice of what we feed or what we focus on. I can either focus on fear or I can focus on faith. And whatever you focus on ultimately feeds your soul. And so if I focus on fear, fear feeds my soul and doubt rises. Or I can focus on Jesus and faith is going to feed my soul and trust is going to rise up in me and move me towards the destiny of God Mm -hmm. for my life. So in 2022, we have to be very conscientious about where we get counsel from. I love that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think it's applicable to this point that fix your focus. Get the right counsel. Uh I love that. And even in the moment when Peter's going down, he's... takes his eyes off of Jesus right. and starts focusing on the wind. Let's not forget Jesus was right there yeah. the whole time. Can you imagine Peter's mental state as he's <laughs> sinking to the bottom and then Jesus' hand appears yeah. mm-hmm. and saves him right there. And it just gives me, again, going back, take courage. Don't be afraid. I'm, I'm here. I, I'm, here. Yeah. I'm here. Jesus was there every single step. And, and so my question for you just in this moment is what are you going to focus on? That's right. Mm-hmm. What will you focus on in this new year? And then let's wrap it up in, in verse 32 here. And guys, I love this. I love how this yeah. story ends. Mm-hmm. To me, it's so powerful. Verse 32 and verse 33. And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Mm-hmm. Verse 33. And the disciples worshiped him. And here's what they said. You really are the son of God. Wow. I think in this moment, there's this, this recognition that they have, mm-hmm. they've gone through a crisis, mm-hmm. right? And oftentimes, crisis reveals to us who God really is. That's right. Yeah. They've gone through this crisis, this moment, and it's like this, the light bulb, the aha moment, I think just went off of, you are who you say you are. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The winds and the waves well, respond to not to yeah. the... To the, to the current of the air, mm-hmm. right? They respond to the King of Kings and yep. the Lord of yep. Lords and the great I am Amen. and the everlasting father, our Amen. Prince of peace. Peace. Yes. peace happened the moment Jesus stepped into the boat. That's it. Mm-hmm. And when he's with us, the storms can be swirling around us, but we can have peace in the midst of them right. when we focus on him. Yeah. That's it. He I, is yeah. who he says he is. I just appreciate and just in all of their response, the disciples worshiped him. Mm-hmm. They didn't really think about, oh, man, that was a close one. Yeah. But their eyes were yeah. on Jesus. You mm-hmm. really are who you say that you are, the Son of God. Mm. Man, that's praiseworthy there. Amen. Yeah. Such, a, so such a powerful story. Pastor Jeremy, close us out today. Hey, guys, we want to thank you for joining us today here on the Sunday after Christmas. Uh, we hope that you've had just an incredible time with family and friends. But as we look into this next year, into 2022. I want to encourage you today that that God's calling you to go to a place that you've never been, to do things that you've never done, to reach people that you've never reached. But it's going to require faith. It's going to require faith that you've never had to demonstrate before. Storms, trials, tribulations are going to come. And they're a tactic of the enemy to discourage you and to distract you. And I want to challenge you moving into this year to go where you've never gone and do what you've never done and reach who you've never reached. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And if you do that, fear will be dispelled and faith will rise and you will fulfill the purpose and the plan that God has for you in this year. It's going to be a great year. It's going to be a transformational year. 
God's going to take you to a new place. It's going to be beyond anything that you've ever thought or imagined before, but it's going to require faith. Determine now before the calendar flips in a few days that you are going to walk by faith and not by sight in 22. And you're going to demonstrate your faith through your obedience. I pray over you today the faith and the favor of the Lord. I pray that God would fill you with courage even now in preparation for what you're going to walk into. I pray that doubt would be cast off and that faith and focus in Jesus would be put on. That we would clothe ourselves with the confidence of Christ and that we would walk, walk boldly and confidently into 2022, knowing that He who has begun a good work in us is faithful to see it through to completion. We love you. We can't wait to see you next Sunday. Have a great remainder of your week and of 2021. The best is yet to come. We love you. See you guys. See you guys later.